I've got to talk about um, Freddie Gray and the trial with Freddie Gray. Um, the multiple trials that are going on with Freddie Gray. And I'm going to um, be speaking to um, my colleague here at the Progressive Army and the Benjamin Dixon Show, um, Anoa Changa. She's going to come in and fill us in on that. Uh, but as it comes, it, it's a it's a frustrating day. But I think when you unpack the particulars about this case, um, it's one, not as frustrating. And two, to me, it actually sends some signals that it's not it's far from over. Um, so while uh, while I get connected with the NOAA, I just want the, the groundwork of this is is that you had officer, I believe, Edward Nero. Um, he was found not guilty on all charges today. The two charges uh, that he was facing was assault and uh, negligence. Um, the assault charge was um, the interesting thing about it was that um, Marilyn Mosby, the prosecuting attorney, she actually brought a, an assault charge based on the fact that the police officer had no legitimate reason to arrest uh, Freddie Gray. Now, what makes this interesting is if um, if this officer had been found guilty of assault based on not having any legitimate reason to arrest uh, Freddie Gray, the ramifications of that would have been unbelievable. Because just in Baltimore alone, there are hundreds of people who are arrested every year who are never charged with anything. It's almost their own version of catch and release, right? They arrest you, they don't get, you don't get charged, and you're thrown back out. And so if this officer had been found guilty, um, this would have really set a precedent that would have shaken police to their core. And rightfully so. Uh, but he was not found guilty today uh, because, and I'm a quote, I'm quoting here from the Baltimore Sun, the judge uh, found no credible facts to show that Nero was directly involved in Gray's arrest and said testimony showed that Nero's role in putting Gray in the van was minimized uh, by the actions of other officers. So it's two things. He said that one, um, that Nero, Officer Nero, who was found not guilty today, this judge, I believe his name is Barry Williams. I, I'll have to, uh, yeah, Barry Williams. Good, good memory. Um, that that uh, Nero, you know, we're not going to find him guilty of assault, not because we don't believe in this theory that uh, Mosby, Mosby is prosecuting him under, but we don't believe that he had anything significant to do with the arrest in the first place. So to me, and I'm going to bring a Noah in on this conversation to me, that's not striking down um, this, this, this precedent. It's not sh striking down this, uh, this legal theory that she went under. Um, so actually I think I have her here. Uh, yeah, there you go. A Noah, a Noah, thank you for joining the conversation. Um, I, I've been filling them in a little bit about just this political, the uh, not political, I'm still thinking political, but this legal theory that Mosby was prosecuting um, Nero under. She lost today, but she didn't lose because the judge said that this is a bogus theory that you're prosecuting him under. He said that I can't find any evidence that he had played a significant role in the arrest. Um, what do you think about that and the possibility of this actually working on a subsequent case because you still have four other officers that need to be tried. Uh, I don't have you. I don't have any audio for you, uh, Anoa. Yeah, let's check your audio on your side. I have you. What the line is wide open, and um, it's saying, okay. So we're going to give you a second to. Uh, I'm going to keep the line open. Just keep trying your audio, and I'll know when you're here. Um, but that's the that's the big thing to me is that. It wasn't a, oh, there you go. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. Okay. What did you Hello? think about that, Anoa? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I can hear Am you I fine. Here? Yes, you're here. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not set up for tonight, but um, one of the articles I read earlier actually did say that he did not necessarily think that she had a legal argument, right? Really? That she didn't meet her burden. Right, she yeah, didn't so I read, mm -hmm. so I read, so I read, well, I read what you read, and she didn't meet her legal. I mean, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. You know, the prosecutor did not meet the legal burden that was upon her in this case, right? 
But I did read that there were people who were saying that this theory of the case, um, in terms of the assault, that basically by affecting an unlawful arrest, what could be argued as an unlawful arrest, um, was basic that they, that that whole chain of events was an assault, right, on Freddie Gray, um, and they were saying, you know, I was just reading earlier, they're like, well, you know, that's never been argued successfully against mm -hmm. a cop effectuating arrest before. Here is the problem with this train of thought that we don't have, because this is the problem, we don't really have very clear guidelines in you know our current jurisprudence, our current legal system for prosecutors to prosecute cases like this, mm -hmm. right? When there's not a clear, specific cause of action involved, because I know everybody's upset. And yes, what the officers did clearly led to the, the, the death of you know Freddie Gray. Mm -hmm. However, the inquiries that later resulted in his death. However, what everyone's thinking about the causation and the negligence, that's a civil suit standard, right? Criminal right. law is completely different than the negligence standard. I mean, you do have criminal negligence, which is something that could have been gone for. Um, like, it was just interesting because the, the misconduct charge, it seemed like the judge said something to the effect of, well, his, he did it. He was, a new, he was a newbie cop and didn't have sufficient training, so you can't really blame him for that. I find it very problematic. Oh, okay, okay, well, I'll stick with the legal first. The legal mm -hmm. first is, the defense gambled on a bench trial. A bench yep. trial means it's just the judge. Just when the you judge. have a case that's very heavily legal, issue oriented, not so much the facts. So it's not like you have like really different fact patterns and different, you know, facts to really argue. If you're just like strongly legal, then you know sometimes people will go straight for a judge. And what I just read, and someone who was in the Maryland bar can correct me if I'm wrong. What I just read is that in Maryland, the prosecutor does not have the right to object um, mm. if a defendant requests a bench trial versus a jury trial. Now, for those who may not have remembered, the very first of these trials was a mistrial. Right. So that one can be tried. It can be retried again. This one cannot because of double jeopardy on these charges. Unless some new evidence arises and there's a new reason for right. new charges, completely different charges. Otherwise, this one is done. But with this cop, basically, from the from, as you already discussed, the, the the burden of proof did, was not met on behalf of the prosecutor. And here's mm -hmm. the issue: prosecutors have to meet their burden, plain and simple. We saw this happen in Trayvon Martin case, with George Zimmerman's case, right. right, with the murder of Trayvon Martin. The prosecutors, Angela Corey's team in Florida, did not meet their burden. They didn't meet their prima facie case, you know, to to get over that reasonable doubt threshold. Beyond okay. reasonable doubt threshold. So, so, and that's the problem you have here um, with Officer William. I mean, with Judge Williams saying, you know, okay, you didn't meet your burden. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. issue, though, with these types of cases, my issue with these types of cases, particularly we're talking because we're talking about police and official actions done in, in, in their official capacity, right? And whether or not someone who is in this position can be held criminally liable for what they do, right? We just saw recently in Brooklyn with Officer Peter Lang, um, while found guilty, you know, his sentence was, his charge was reduced, and ultimately he was, he was given only five years for probation for killing, right. you know, Kai Gurley, an unarmed man who was just walking in his stairwell. So, so we have a pattern. There's a pattern in practice in the United States of not prosecuting police officers. Let me jump in there real things quick. That they do. Let me jump in there real quick because what um, I was speaking to, uh, um, I have a friend, police officer, and are, are actually he's 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 inside of the criminal justice system, not a police officer, and he outlined mm -hmm. that um, that it's it's it is baked into our system that we give officers as much leeway as humanly possible yes. all the way up to the point of blatant criminality so that they can yes. feel free to do their job and that's one of the critiques of mosby's theory right that her theory that if he arrested him without cause that this constitutes assault then that precedent would really infringe on the freedom that police officers have to actually um, to even make mistakes without fear of being arrested and charged. Right. So there's this, I, you know, obviously there's this, this whole spin about um, um, the Ferguson effect and police officers being afraid to do their job. Then this could have amounted to the Baltimore effect. But I did not see the article that you saw. I did see the information saying that she didn't meet her burden of proof. But the justification. Yeah, if I could find it, if I could 
find it earlier. I found it like earlier. It was just saying that it like the justification, the argument that she was trying to use. Some people described it as novel yeah. or radical idea. Yeah, they I have mean, a Georgetown. Um, kind of, there's a Georgetown yeah. professor that said that it's a quote unquote gutsy, uh, gutsy move. So, but I still it's like and, balls to the wall. You said, and you said, I, I'm <laughs> sorry. Like I was watching, it's balls to the wall. I mean, it was a gutsy move. It really was. I was watching. I stayed home. Go ahead. Go ahead. I had a little bit of a. I had a little bit. I had a little bit of a little trouble breathing. I got asthma, so I had a little trouble breathing earlier. So I stayed home today. So I was watching The View. I never ever watch The View. It's like it, it's mind numbing. But there's a woman on there. I'm assuming she must be like their legal analyst. But she was talking, and um, what she was saying was that she really felt that part of the problem with these first two trials and the way they have been is that you know Mosby did not take enough time to actually mm. formulate what the charges were going to be and how to go about executing these cases yeah. effectively to actually get a charge and was reacting to the emotionalism and trying to help, uh, you know, calm the city after, you know, Baltimore had an uprising essentially after this all happened. Yeah. And I think that there's probably some truth to that, right? Because you do want to show that you're responding to people's needs and concerns. On the flip side, people really have to understand. I understand we're fed up with the way the justice system works or the injustice system, as some people say. But at the same time, you can't just rush into these cases. Like, it's not just, well, they did this, he's dead. Okay, what are you going to do about it? Like, you really got to, you do have to take time to, to adequately put together. Because these cases are having back to back to back, right? Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. it's been a year. I know people are like, well, it's been a year. Yes, it's been a year, but they probably had all types of different, they've had different motions and court battles up and down. Um, the first officer has been has been ordered to testify in subsequent cases. Um, that went up to their appeals court in Maryland. Like, there's been a lot of other things procedurally that have been happening well, before let me, these trials. Let me jump in place. there. Let me jump in there because I think that um, I I I I heard that critique of her these uh, not adequately developing the charges before uh, she actually rolled them out. Uh, I don't. I, dis I don't necessarily agree with that. Yeah. But that was just something that I heard no, no, earlier no. that made me stop and pause, and I had to think. Like I said, hmm, that's an yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's something that's to consider. I, but I think one of the um, um, possibly that she may have reached too far with who she was charging, um, particularly that with the language too. with the language that the judge used here. Because it, it, just reading his comments, the comments that yeah. were provided, of course, by the media, and I, I wish I had a copy of the actual transcript, but in the comments that right. the Baltimore Sun shared, he didn't, he didn't smash her theory as much as the fact that she was charging him, um, saying that, that there's yeah. really no well, evidence that he thing. was the one that would right. cause this negligence and right. was uh, wrong in arresting him. Go ahead. Well, that's Pretty the other thing. Like, like part of it also kind of tied. There was like an accomplice liability right argument in there, and and basically, if it's accomplice liability, if there, if you have a criminal action that's going on and you participate or assist in any portion of the action, you you're a liable as an accomplice, right? It's a, mm -hmm. it's also similar to being a co-conspirator. Um, that's kind of also part of tied in it. Like, look, look, the problem is like to, to meet what she was trying to do. It, it was very convoluted for mm -hmm. this 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 particular officer. Mm -hmm. Also, everyone needs to be clear. This is for this particular officer, right. and the judge was very clear on that. That yeah. this pertains to this particular officer. It does not affect the retrial of the first officer. Mm -hmm. It does not affect the trial of the subsequent four officers. And those cases are coming back to back all through the rest of the summer, with the last one starting in October. I'm going to be honest everyone with you. Needs to I think I I'm think concerned. she's going to I think she's going to win um, on these charges with some of these officers. I don't think this was the one. I obviously. have to look and see what the, what the charges are for all because they all don't have the same exact charges right. either. They, right. have, they have, varying, have different charges. The charges vary. Right. So all the way up to like manslaughter and, 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 yeah. and yeah. And, I wanna, talk, and I think it's different when you're talking about the people who actually like so the person who actually didn't buckle him in, right? Yes. The person who actually did the rough right. I mean, you have a different, but but this guy, I do. So 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 I'll get to like like part of my pet peeve is with these cases, we really don't have enough teeth in American exists American law. And your friend yeah. is absolutely correct. These are given wide latitude. What you see happening on Law and Order SVU, 
that's kind of that's 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 really like police correction officers and stuff like that. I mean, the problem is though that we have people who abuse their power. We have people who act what should be considered outside of the bounds of the law, mm -hmm. except for the fact that the law has been stretched so far to permit them to do basically anything. And the problem is when there is no real push for, I mean, the comment was from the judge, well, this guy didn't have proper training. If he didn't have proper training, he should have been there? out in the damn street exactly. handling anybody. Exactly. Right. And, and, and also as a person, if somebody violates you, even if it's not anything as a serious violation as deprivation of life, as in this case, but a more a lesser, but still, our only recourse, and basically the way that the court seem to act, is that the only recourse we have is to sue the city. Yeah. That does nothing to address, you know, police behavior, misconduct, abuse, and in this case, a death. I like, also, our go ahead. standard. No, go ahead. I was gonna say I, I like say this comment. <laughs> we 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 haven't been on air together in a minute, but it's, let me give you this comment no, from. We for, I know, I know, I know. Let me give you this comment from the chat room. I think it's a uh, uh, right on point. They, um, this is from a BS opinion. You got to get a better, better name than that because this is actually a great point. You said that um, we need to, but shouldn't we be talking about not be talking about how to punish the bad cops um, when they mess up, but we need to also talk about how do we get better cops in the first place? And that goes directly to what you're saying with this police officer. If he didn't have adequate training, then he had absolutely no business being on the streets, right? He he was that's not that's not something that should be just casually dismissed as making this OK. That's a systemic failure of the system uh, that compounded the issue. And I think that's where we have to really start shifting the conversations. I want to ask you about this uh, uh, before before I let you go. I want to ask you about the willingness of the prosecutor to try police officers. Can that be in itself um, um, a, a catalyst for systemic change in your police departments? I think you need to not only have, I think we need to have, like, going to the first point, I think we need to have not just a willingness, because that's a huge problem too, right? We see prosecutors going out of their way to not charge police officers. Yeah. And when they finally do bring charges, it's like it's a victory. But bringing charges is only the first step. It's actually getting the conviction. Because con convictions can actually act as a deterrent. However, you know, on the flip side, like to the other person's comment, we do need, we need better training. We need actually monitoring of police practice, procedures, et cetera, going on in these departments. We know there's been a longstanding widespread issue. It's not just Chicago or Cleveland or Ferguson, oh, excuse me, or in this case, Baltimore, you know, L.A., uh, uh, New York, like there is a, there is a, there, there is a LA case. There's a case out of California looking at the LAPD. I think it was about 15, 10 years ago, maybe. Yeah. And they looked at the fact that if you have certain action going on over a period of time and it can be documented a certain way, you can actually use the RICO statutes against yep. you. You can, you can basically treat the police department as a criminal enterprise and use RICO and RICO. Why RICO is good. Cause that can let you go back even further than just, you know, X, X amount of years for issues, which was the problem with the John Burge cases out of Illinois, out of Chicago. John Burge, ultimately, out of the, the police brutality torture cases, I think it was spanned over like two decades, but he only, they could only get him on, um, I believe it was perjury. He did like, he yeah. was charged, ultimately convicted of three years, I think it was perjury. Still gets his, his, his state of Illinois pension, living the high life in Florida on taxpayers' dime, despite torturing and destroying the lives of hundreds of men and women. Yeah. But, um, but, 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 but the statute of limitations ran. And when the DOJ had the opportunity to go in and investigate then, they only investigated his specific issue in area right. two instead of, but, and now we see the DOJ going back into Chicago now. And this That's, is like 10, 15 years later. There is, and, but, but, there but, is but, so but, much. Go ahead. Well, the last thing I wanted to say, though, is that, you know, someone, someone in the chat room said, well, if you look at the, the code, then that'll tell you what. The, yes, 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 yes. Dude, I'm a lawyer. I know these things. If you look at the code, you lay it out. But it's not that just example. Like, OK, you have elements. And you have factors. Right. So if you have an element, if your statute, if your if your if your issue is a stat is elements, you have to meet everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And you have to argue that she must have thought that based on the facts that she could argue and meet that burden. And she did not do it. The, the judge just did not buy it. It was a stretch in this case. I um, think, I think, let me, let me, let me jump in right this, there. This uh, earlier. Go ahead. Um, I think that, um, I, I think that this is a, an incident where this, 
I don't think it's the end of the story. I, um, I, I want to I want to end it here and let you uh, um, give the last word and, and and tell everyone how to get up with you. But I, honestly, I don't think this is the end of the story for this case. Uh, for this case, yes, but for all of the cases, no, uh, because I would be I would want to see if the judge just completely dismissed her theory. For this, because I think there's another, I think there's one other officer who's charged with in the similar fashion. Um, I, I think yes. that she might have some success with the second officer who's charged in a similar fashion. Um, but in general, you know, just based on um, based on the merits of the case that we are given, right? Uh, this particular officer um, did not. Well, it's clear the 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 judge said that he she did not meet the the burden of, of proof uh, to to convict him. And it does leave a bad taste in your mouth because it's just consistent with everything else that we experience as people who are trying to fight for justice. You see time after time after time, a police officer getting off or not even getting charged. So um, this is just two out of four, uh, two out of six. There's four other cases uh, that we have to go to see Marilyn Mosby's well, and uh, the, approach. And, and we'll see if the first one gets retried, retried. or yeah, not. Good like point. I said, the first, good point. One, first one was a, was a mistrial. But the issue too, is that we have this way of looking at police cases like you said earlier police tend to get a pass unless there's something extraordinarily egregious as in the Holtz Claw Claw trial with with the police officer who raped several women out in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. Unless we have something like egregious like that and that was extremely egregious and, and heinous and it took so much before anyone and it actually, with that case, it's not like the police department found out about it and they fired him right away. They still needed pressure to even fire him, right? Yeah. Because the the, the the blue, the, the blue cold of silence, the, the wall, like yeah. police it's, do things. Snitch. And a lot of police, <laughs> right, a lot of police, you know, they behave fine, whatever the case may be. But there are a lot of things that happen out there that is not okay. And we don't have either... Either prosecutors do not feel comfortable or do not feel supported enough to be able to bring these charges. That is why actually seeing or, the community step up. Yeah. Well, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, I, I think, say, I think it's the opposite. Step I think up it's, and put the pressure on. I think it's the, well, I think that's some say, of it, but you have people the, like, um, I think his name was McAuliffe over in Ferguson also, who is just so in bed oh, with the yeah. police officers. Oh, where, that was, that's what I was going to say. That, that, was my, that was the second one I was going to say. So on the one hand, you have either you have prosecutors who, Maybe they feel like they do not have the support to do what they need to do mm-hmm. because they do have to rely on the police. That's what a comment someone made to me earlier. You know, the prosecutors do have a close relationship with the police officers that they, that they work with. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't want the police to shut down on them and not be cooperative. But on the flip side, like you were just saying, yes, but on the flip side, those are those are my friends. Why am yeah. I going to go after my friends? Because they're exactly. just doing what they got to do, and they help me make my cases. All but the, the more last reason, thing I was going to say, all the more reason that, to know for all the more reason for them to get a special prosecutor um, in cases like this, because there's there's inherent um, there's inherent tension if you're going to be have an adversarial um, trial, which you're supposed to have as an adversarial trial between the prosecutor and the defense, right? So it's going to create enough tension yeah. and animosity in the city of Baltimore that Mosby is probably going to fill it for the rest of her term as as the prosecutor right but then you also have the opposite situation where they're where their best friends with their best friends and they won't have any any uh any reason to actually carry out the adversarial uh nature of our political of our 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 judicial system she's going to feel it on multiple fronts from the people from the from the mayor's office from the police department she's going to feel on multiple parts i'm pretty sure her and her team will go to the drawing board and be like okay these are the charges. This is what happened. Because again, this is a this is seen as a huge, you know, setback in a way. But they've had, like, if you look at some of the other procedural like wins, basically, getting the first getting one officer to be compelled to testify, you know, in subsequent trials, even if they're not before their trial has even happened, that's like yeah. a big deal. That yeah. is a big deal. So there are things that have happened that are 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 big deal, but she has to make sure that she has it tight and that she can make her burden proof and, and that the holes aren't there. Yeah. Um, but this opting for a bench trial thing also works in the defendant's, defendant's favor. But the last thing I was going to say is we need to start looking towards a different standard of addressing police killings, police yeah. abuse, and police brutality. Yeah. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, academic, you know, there are a lot of pieces out there. there are, there's a lot, and, and if we look to international human rights law, UN standards of how to handle police misconduct issues, we need to get out of this 
because the way we have use of force here in America, the the, 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 the if there's too much, yeah. there's way too much um, Leverage, leeway given leeway. to police officers. Yeah, that's the officers. word I'm looking for. And, 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 and when, when families only, at this point, basically, what people are saying is, is like your only Noah. recourse is to sue. <laughs> and then people, and then people, uh-oh. I got to cut it. No, we're out of time. I got to no, cut you're, it. It's okay. It's okay. All right. Tell y'all, everybody. Y'all know where to find me. I don't need to tell. Y'all know where to find me. I'm on Twitter. <laughs> Miss Nono ESQ. Find her on Twitter and we'll figure this up this conversation. You got the whole night tomorrow night to, to just unpack it as much as you want to. But listen, thanks so much for coming on at the last <laughs> night, second. Guys. I do appreciate it. All right. All right. Good night. All right. Take care.